All right, guys, let's talk about finding a good home inspector that you can partner with for years to come. So I used to be a professional home inspector for several years. I was trained by a guy who's considered to be one of the very best uh, home inspectors in Texas, um, which of course Texas is huge, so how do you say that? But he was a, a coach among home inspectors. He had inspected over 3,000 properties by the time that I had learned from him. And if you think about that, each home inspection probably takes, you know, four hours, three to four hours on average, and he's done 3,000. He'd spent hours and hours and hours of his life in houses looking for property, uh, looking for problems, all that stuff. So I learned from him. I did a had a professional home inspection business for several years, and I learned a few things along the way. But what I found most fascinating is that after I was a home inspector and then I became a realtor, it became really hard for me to find a home inspector that I respected and trusted and really liked and felt like was gonna help the deal. So let's talk about what's gonna help you find a great home inspector that you uh, feel comfortable with, that's gonna help your clients, that's gonna protect them and help deals move forward, but also protect them in the right way, okay? So here's some of the things that I personally look for in a home inspector. Um, and honestly, we've we found a home inspector that we really like, and I'll just share some of the things that he does that kind of won me over, okay? I remember the very first time that um, I got some marketing material from here, from him, um, he, he put a, a clause in there. It, first off, everything looked pretty sharp, so I was interested in what he had to offer. Um, but then he had some wording in there that said he's a non-alarmist, which I thought was genius because um, I hate it whenever you have a home inspector and they find something that could be a big deal, it could be absolutely nothing, but they will off the cuff say something that could freak your person out and cause the whole thing to fall to pieces and they raise an alarm that doesn't need to be raised, especially if it's like a $50 fix, but now they're all panicking about whatever this is. So he said, I'm a non-alarmist. So I started to check him out. And uh, of course, one of the things that I looked for was what's his experience, what's his education, you know? So experience and education are totally different things. Education um, matters in some states. It's really easy to get your home inspection license. Um, so Oklahoma is one of those, it's pretty easy. You can pretty much just have a flashlight and go through a little course and call it good. Texas was way harder, which is where my license was. Um, so I don't know what state that you're in for your home inspectors, but you wanna look at their um, education and make sure it's from a credible source. But then also what's their background before that? A lot of home inspectors were home builders for years and years and years or they're construction guys of some sort. Maybe they're roofers, maybe they're uh, professional tradesmen in different areas. What's their expertise? How many years in the business did they have before that? And what can they bring to the table, not just their most recent education? Um, of course, did they learn from anybody? So I love to share with people that I learned from one of the best in all of Texas. And I really did feel like I learned some of the best systems, the best processes, the best ways to do home inspections so we never missed anything along the way. Um, so you're looking for those things. You're looking for insurance. What kind of insurance do they have? So if something goes wrong and uh, you know your client is mad and wants to call them up and go after them, what type of insurance do they have and is it gonna be helpful or not? So ask that question for sure. Um, uh, all of them should have appropriate insurance, but you never know, so definitely ask. Um, another thing that I'm gonna look for is their reports. The reports are a huge thing for me. So when I was doing home inspections, computers were just kind of um, becoming helpful in home inspection industry just a few years before I started. And so up until that point, everybody was using paper contracts or, or paper inspections, and it was just kind of chicken scratch for a couple pages and pretty much worthless in terms of what a report should be. Um, I loved our reports because they were kind of the first ones in our area back you know, 10 years ago uh, that would use pictures inside of a computerized report. And it was cutting edge, it was amazing, right? Well, nowadays it's so easy for an inspector to have a smartphone and to put an appropriate picture every time he sees something that's a problem. So if you have an inspection report, I'll just say it plain and simple. If you get a home inspector and it gives you a home inspection report that you as the realtor 
it's not easily understood. I promise you, your clients are not understanding what's being communicated. And I would highly recommend find a different home inspector because the reports nowadays, it's so easy to have a fantastic report that very clearly walks the inspector through every piece of the puzzle to make sure they cannot miss um, any part of the home inspection. And then when they find something, they can quickly snap a picture and show you with arrows exactly what's wrong with it. The home inspection report shouldn't be scary. It shouldn't be confusing. It shouldn't be um, like overwhelming. It needs to be simple and clear and helpful in the, in the end of it. Something that home inspectors do um, is a lot of the home inspection programs are actually written like the, the wording, the description of what this issue is. It's written by somebody, uh, either a lawyer or somebody who has looked it over with, with that lens as far as how am I gonna get sued? How can I word this correctly? So in those programs that they use to do inspections, they'll just simply click a button. And when they click the button, it will print out like a whole paragraph. Like a decade ago, that's what mine would do. I would click one button, there's a wall crack, and it would print out like a whole disclosure with pictures and diagrams and all this kind of stuff. So a lot of times because of that, because the home inspectors are trying to protect themselves, the home inspection report can feel really scary when your client goes to read it by themselves, okay? And so hopefully their report isn't too scary. Um, something that I really like, if I can find it, is somebody who will give me a summary, like, okay, yes, your job is to find everything that's not perfect in this house. But tell me the truth. What uh, should I pay attention to? What really matters? Be careful though, because there's some home inspectors who love to put pricing on every single litter repair. And you know, just as well as I do, if, if a person knows how to swap out you know, some little piece, it could be a 20 cent repair, or it could be a hundred dollar repair if they go get ripped off by some, some other, you know, tradesman. So the pricing is always really tricky to me. I don't personally like to see the pricing in those reports, but I do like to see kind of maybe color coded or something to communicate. This is a big deal. If this home inspector was purchasing that house, they would care about these things. Okay. So um, make sure the report is clear before you leave the house with the home inspector, make the home inspector go through the whole report top to bottom and then walk around the house to every place where they are and say, tell me more about this. What does this mean? And make sure you're watching your client's um, opinion, you, you know, like their reaction to what the home inspector is saying. So um, if they get concerned or they don't understand or you think they don't understand, ask the home inspector as many questions as you can so that you get it clarified. Um, and that, that when they get that report that night or the next day and they show it to their spouse or whoever else is interested that wasn't there, that they're not going to freak out because they don't understand what the real problem was. Okay. Of course, highlight real problems, but don't let your clients get freaked out for no reason. Okay. So, um, make sure the report is good. Make sure it's clear. Make sure uh, your client understands it before the home inspector leaves. What I personally do is I take notes during the end of the inspection, before the client leaves, I say, okay, so here's what I wrote down. What did you write down? What do you think you care about? Before we leave, we kind of know what they're gonna be asking for in repairs, even before they get the report. Okay, next question I'm gonna ask the home inspector is how long does it take to get the home inspection report spit back out? Most of them put it back out within a matter of hours or definitely by that evening, but if it's taking any longer than that, find somebody else. Um, something else that's important to me is uh, their bedside manner. Now this one is probably one of the most important ones to me personally, but the way that they communicate their words as they're walking around the house with the client, are they gonna blow the deal or not? Are they going to see a little crack in a wall and say, oh yeah, well we had that big earthquake and then just move on like they didn't say anything that's terrifying to your client, okay? Um, are they going to see that the AC isn't blowing quite right? And they'd be like, well, it is getting pretty old. It's probably time for a new one. And that AC unit may work great for 10 more years, but now they've planted a seed of fear inside of the client's mind for, that wasn't necessary, right? So I'm a stickler on those specific words that come out of their mouth when they're in the middle of the inspection and they're just kind of walking around doing their thing. So pay attention to that and make sure that you feel like the words coming out of their mouth are appropriate. 
if you have an inspector that you think is great, but the words coming out of their mouth, you feel like are a little off, please go try a different inspector because there's plenty of them who are fantastic at the bedside manner of home inspections. You don't need to put up with somebody who can't communicate extremely well with your clients, okay? Um, one of the last things that I, I really personally enjoy is the professionalism. Now there's some home inspectors who are kind of old school and it's, you know, it's whatever, but there's some that are really sharp. And so like one of my favorite guys, he shows up with chairs, simple thing. I think I used to do that, um, but he'll show up with chairs. He'll also show up with a bag of snacks and drinks, okay, which is awesome. Then he has a binder of home maintenance tips that's very nice. Uh, I think it's actually a book. It's really helpful. He has a large list of contractors that he has vetted that he thinks are great um, that he will give to the clients for free. And then um, let's see what else. He also has a 90 day buyback guarantee, which is a big national program that you can do it. But basically it's peace of mind for you and for your client. If your client moves into the house, you close, um, you get your commission check, your client lives there for up to 90 days. And then the client decides that they actually don't want it anymore then the client can sell it back to the home inspector or through this program for whatever they paid for it. And they'll, they'll buy it back, no questions asked. And then um, you get to go shopping again with your client and get your commission again. And then they use you as the listing realtor as well. It's a great program. It's available to all of these guys. I think it's a fantastic choice. So what types of other services are they offering you? Um, other questions, of course, would be pricing and reinspection pricing and add-on pricing because if you're not watching those prices, they can go way up. And so definitely shop those out and kind of, you might wanna make a spreadsheet for your clients so they can see this guy costs this much and here's his add-ons and here's his experience. You know, This guy has these things and he offers this guarantee. This guy brings cookies, <laughs> whatever it is. Um, but help your clients know who's out there. The other thing that I will say as a caveat is as a realtor, I don't recommend, I try personally to stay out of the recommendation of the home inspector too much because if something goes wrong, no matter how good your home inspector is, something's gonna go wrong someday. And when something is missed or something goes wrong, they're looking at you. <laughs> your client is gonna call you. Well, you told me to use so-and-so. You said he was great. You said you said something about this person. Um, and so you're gonna somehow get put on the hook and they're gonna try to drag anybody into the situation who they think has any sort of money, they're gonna drag them in there. So I like to say, hey, please do your own research. Here are some that we have worked with in the past that have done a good job. Here's their names and numbers. Please research them on your own. Just because they were good in the past doesn't mean they're gonna be good uh, tomorrow. They're imperfect and I just kinda have it pasted into my phone in the notes so I can just copy paste real quickly and send it off to the clients. Um, Okay, so I think those are my highlights of how to find a great home inspector. If you don't love your home inspector, if you don't think there's available and helpful for you and your clients, kick them to the curb. There's tons of great home inspectors out there. Um, start getting on the phone, ask them questions, dig deep, find out how they operate. You can find somebody that you love and you're gonna be with for a long time in business. Thanks.